Look, thanks for coming along today. This is a really, really exciting day for, for Adelaide and South Australia. Of course, overnight it was announced that Australia will be hosting the Women's World Cup for 2023, and Adelaide were a big part of that bid process. So we're really excited to have the people we have here lined up who've done a, a power of work, and I would like to acknowledge Natasha Stoppersboyer for her great work in helping bring this together. Um, look, we're here at Highmarsh as well, which will be the venue where we'll play the games. Our Highmarsh, we know, is one of the best uh, playing surfaces in the country. Uh, players love playing on this uh, at this venue and uh, on this pitch, um, and we know that it's going to attract nearly 20,000 people to games here. It was just late last year that we had Chile playing here with Sam Kerr, Jenna, and uh, all the stars of the uh, Matildas, and it was just a great buzz and a great vibe around the place. To know that in 2023 we're going to have the world's best players playing here should have every South Australian truly excited. This is a huge event. Of course, when we look back in our lives, um, the announcement of Sydney for the Olympics was a really major coup for our country. This event here is just as big. In fact, I think it's bigger. Having a World Cup in our country is something that is not to be sneezed at. This is something that we can all embrace and all be a part of, and I think this will be a revolutionary for our country and our state. So as a government, we're really excited to be behind this project. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful win for South Australia and South Australians. I think you can feel the excitement here today. It's only going to, be build, it's only going to build in the years to come and everyone should be right behind this project. Um, I'm happy to talk for longer, but you probably don't want to hear from me. Is it, who would you like to call Attention. up behind me? There we go, I told you, I told you. <laughs> Good morning everyone, or good afternoon. I don't think everyone can stop smiling. We're so happy with this result. Uh, it's a wonderful result and we thank uh, FIFA for their um, decision. Uh, it's a wonderful day for our state in particular because the Minister is right. He and this state and all the organisations associated with football in South Australia have played a disproportionate impact. Uh, they've had a disproportionate effort when it comes to ensuring that the Women's World Cup for 2023 is based here. It's a Women's World Cup of many firsts. The first co-confederation cup, the first in the Southern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere the first in the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, it's going to be so exciting and it sends a message not just about the potential social and economic impact for this state and for the nation, um, but what about the message that it sends to the next generation, not just of women and girls playing football, but also it sends a message to men and boys. It sends a strong message that our country and our state values football and its wonders, but also we value equality between men and women, boys and girls. So it seems like only yesterday, doesn't it guys, that we were here, what, four months ago with the FIFA officials checking out the technicalities of this stadium and of course the many others around uh, our country and New Zealand that will be uh, hosting these events. Uh, but it's been a long time coming. It's been three or four years that our Commonwealth Government and other state and territory governments have been involved in this bid process. It's been a thrill and an honour to be involved, uh, not just because I'm a South Australian, but because I'm passionate about the game, but particularly passionate about the message we will send the boys and girls of the future. Sir, could you just tell us your name before you go have some get on Sam Ciccarillo, President of Football South Australia. There is no bigger event than a FIFA World Cup, and for Adelaide to be a part of the 2023 FIFA World Cup, Women's World Cup, is an honour and it's an exciting journey that we'll all take over the next three years. So we can host the best players and the best nations in the world playing football. These events don't happen without critical support from government, both at a state level and a federal level. And I've got to thank the, uh, the national government and the state government, Stephen Marshall, our Premier, and Corey Wingard, our Minister, have been really critical behind the scenes in making sure that we put in a really strong bid to be a part of the FIFA 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. The Women's World Cup will no doubt in time be as big as the Men's World Cup. <clears throat> And I think that Adelaide and Sydney and Melbourne and the other cities and New Zealand will put on a magnificent event and a showcase to benchmark for future FIFA Women's World Cup. I'm delighted to be able to represent the Federation here today. I congratulate the bid team in the FFA 
I congratulate Natasha and her bid team in South Australia and all the people that have come together to be able to present to FIFA a compelling reason for Australia and New Zealand to host the 23, 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jenna, yeah, however, does it feel annoying that you're going to have the chance to have a World Cup on home soil? Yeah, it's pretty special um, and something that uh, obviously everyone is really wrapped about. Uh, personally, you know, for the opportunity to potentially represent your country and, and play in front of your family and friends um, is, is extremely special and, uh, and obviously everyone's going to be working really hard um, towards that tournament to, to make sure that we're involved. Saw the uh, footage overnight in Sydney of all the, a few of the Matildas players reacting to the news. Where were you when you found out that it's going to be in Australia? Yeah, so I was here in Adelaide, um, but I uh, had a little power nap before the announcement and then woke up uh, just in time and um, and made sure that I was awake for the announcement. I wouldn't, wouldn't have missed it for the world, um, you know, either way. Uh, I, I wanted to be up and supporting uh, the entire team that's gone through this whole process. It's been a huge, huge job, um, a huge bid effort from FFA and the bid team and um, the congratulations really does go to them. They're the ones who worked tirelessly for the last, you know, 18 months or so to get this over the line and for this bid to be that strong, you know, so-and-so pulled out, so-and-so pulled out, but we were always going to win it from the very beginning. We had the strongest bid and, and the team was, the team was just, just incredible, really, to, to get it over the line. So, you know, on behalf of all the players, we're just so grateful to be able to have this opportunity to potentially represent, you know, our country um, involvement in the squad in 2023. Can you give us an insight about how you think it uh, really um, advertises the code over the next two or three years and beyond? Yeah, well, I mean, already we've seen um, everybody jump on board, showing their support over social media, and, and we've seen the 800,000 um, show their support online by getting on side. So that's just that's just the start of it, and we've got th you know three years to prepare. Um, so the level that we're at now um, with with football um, in the women's uh, league is 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 great, but I think this is only going to help propel it um, over the next three years, and then. The position that we could potentially be in in 2023 is, um, you know, hopefully uh, a position where we can, you know, be a fully functional, professional, um, full-time athletes uh, in the women's game. You're personally you leaving the Crows to go to Europe. Where, where are you at with that at the moment and sort of how's that going? Yeah, so my decision to, to step away from AFL was purely um, to be wearing this polo right now and um, I'm really just grateful that, uh, that I'm able to be doing what I'm, what I'm doing and uh, you know that that for me to be still continuously wearing this shirt and the jersey is means that I've got to put myself in in the best position to be able to um, continue playing and and if that means that I've got to go overseas and uh, challenge myself in a really great uh, league then I'm going to do that and um, yeah so I've got an opportunity that um, you know hopefully we be able to announce over the coming weeks but um, yeah I'm really excited for my um, short term future and my goals in the near future is obviously the, the Olympics next year and, and that's making sure that I'm performing um, at my best in, in club land up until then and then you know once hopefully we've had some success there and I get to be involved then focus will obviously immediately shift to the World Cup. What do you think it will do for women's sport in general in Australia? I mean not only football but this is the biggest women's single sporting event on yeah, the course. planet. What do you think it's going to do for you? You know, well, already I've got people who have never watched a football game in their life who have told me that they're going to come out and watch. So, um, you know, it's it's going to bring the awareness of the sport um, and, and particularly the women's game um, to people who might not, not have ever watched a game before or know anything about it, not know any players and come bring the family um, on a day out and, you know, hopefully watch us here at Cooper Stadium and, and, and be successful. So it's... It's hopefully going to, yeah, well, not hopefully, it will propel uh, this entire um, women's sport uh, and, and football as a code to um, every lounge room in the country and every lounge room over the world. And and uh, if, if we're not already household names, we we'll certainly will be by then. Do you think it's also salvage the W League? It's been a little bit in the background. I know you might be going out of the season in the A League as well. Do you think it's going to 
going to skyrocket again. Everyone was in the doldrums a couple of weeks ago. We don't know what's going on with the broadcaster, new seasons, etc. Et yeah, obviously, in um, you know, short term future with the current situation, it's uh, we don't quite know uh, the position that the leagues are going to be in. You know, when we come out of it in six months' time, but. Um, this yeah, this bid and this this success will it will skyrocket. Uh, you know, like what I've mentioned before, the, the league and, and the sport in general to to more households across across the country and across the world. Do you think there's um, a scope for the intervening period to uh, identify a new crop of talent, given the interest it might generate? Yeah, look, I've I've said it a couple of times um, today already, but um, I'm really excited for people. Um, uh, boys and girls to be able to come and watch and experience that live feeling of watching a game and watching players represent the country that they're from um, and the potential spark that that could um, ignite in you know uh, the, the youth whether it be a boy or a girl and the potential that they could have to then go on with that spark that's been generated from the performances that we put on in the, the World Cup stage is very exciting and you know that could potentially mean uh, a stronger future for, for football. The draw is obviously a long way out, but are you hoping the Matildas get to play here in one of the games? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, South Australia is my home state, and I would uh, love to be able to play here again. You know, last last November against uh, Chile was was a special moment for me, and um, and yeah, I, I would love the opportunity to be able to play here again. Such a great stadium, and, and one of the best for football. Thanks. Here we go. Uh, what, uh, what are some of the net benefits that it will be for South Australia? You can imagine that there will be at least three or four games here, given the, the way that the pool system is structured with a 32-team comp. Um, talking, talking dollars and talking feet through the gates, how many are we looking at? Yeah, look, one of the advantages was when the, uh, the draw moved out to 32, so it, it gave us an opportunity. I know in, in the bid book process, I think it was four, four games and potentially around a 16 game. We'll be pushing as hard as we can for whatever games we can. The great opportunity also is um, Adelaide being such a wonderful city, our state being such a great state, we'll be doing all we can to entice um, countries to come and set up uh, camp here, set up base here, and uh, that gives great economic uh, opportunities to South Australia. So we'll be working as hard as we can to try and lock that away. But um, I think when they come here too, as everyone does, when you come to South Australia, you realise how great a place it is. So that economic benefit will be fantastic and we'll be looking to do all we can to, to land teams, uh, to have a base here and get the best gains we possibly can. The Olympic more game. specifically, um, what changes can we expect around us here for Highmark Stadium? Yeah, again, as part of the bid process, uh, we did put in uh, some money to upgrade uh, Highmark Stadium and increase the capacity. Uh, we know through the 2019 uh, Women's FIFA World Cup, the average crowd was around 22,000. Um, we know that with the uh, filling in of the stadium here, we can get it close to 20, so that's what we'll be looking at. But we'll be looking at all other opportunities we can to make this as good as it can possibly be. We know the playing surface is outstanding and we'll be looking at other opportunities to upgrade the stadium to make sure it's tickety-boo uh, for the Women's World Cup. Are you talking in a temporary sense like they did with the Olympic Games? Uh, yes, that, that was what was put in as far as the bid process. So we'll have a look at all that and we'll assess it against uh, any other opportunities that are here. But what we do know uh, from, from being in this role is when an opportunity presents itself, we want to make sure we get the, uh, the best bang for buck. We did it with uh, putting a roof on the Memorial Drive and getting the new event there, uh, brought you know, Ash Barty to town and a, a new big tennis event which was really well received. This is an opportunity here as well. We've got that, uh, the finances committed to, to again do that body of work to make sure that this bid was bid compliant. We'll have a look at all other opportunities around that and uh, have more to say on that in the coming weeks. So so you really guarantee games here? The said they're coming to Adelaide, is that 100%? That was in the bid process, that's what we put forward to get those, uh, the four games in the uh, in the lead up and the round of 16 games, so we'll be pushing for that. If we can get more, that's what we'll be really keen to see. So, so we haven't got any confirmation them? yet? Uh, look, the draw hasn't been done, it hasn't been put out yet, so we'll get all that ratified when the draw comes out. But uh, we were there, we were part of the bid process, we we're right in the middle of this, and uh, we'll be pushing for the best possible outcomes for South Australia. But you the, actually, government. the government actually 
withdrew its bid because you couldn't get any confirmation of a major game. So did that change at all when you went back in? You know, what happened from the first time was um, the requirement for the size of stadium. Uh, we didn't meet that here with Highmarch. That's when there were 28 teams in the uh, in the pool. Uh, FIFA expanded that out to 32, which was a real great fillip for us and a win for us. And as I say, uh, in the 2019 Women's World Cup, the average crowd was around 22,000. So that made uh, this stadium really the ideal boutique stadium that it is. We know that we can fill in the seats and get close to 20,000. So this place will be rocking, there's no doubt about that. You mentioned before about putting a uh, roof on Memorial Drive. Is that a possibility happening here, especially considering this will be played in winter? I'll take you with me. We'll go and see the treasurer and see what we can do. <laughs> uh, it, it's always about those negotiations. Look, we know uh, the, glo the global scene at the moment, we know the national scene at the moment, and South Australia is not immune to what we've uh, experienced with COVID-19. But again, we have a great opportunity, and when we get opportunities, we want to make sure we leverage them as best we can. We did that with Memorial Drive. We'll have a look at all our opportunities here at Highmark Stadium. It was considered a new stadium. What's that? Have I considered it myself? Uh, look, that, that of course has been on the cards. The Treasurer uh, made a few comments about that last weekend. Again, the global situation we're in, uh, it does make it very difficult at the moment. But um, you know, we'll keep pushing for the best opportunities for South Australia. Has the government crunched the numbers on how many people we could see come to South Australia for this? No, I haven't uh, haven't seen those numbers as yet, but the opportunities are endless. And I think that's the, the great situation we're in now as a state, and everyone should be excited about that. There's the games, obviously, and, and people coming to watch the games. We know, you know that's a big win. But as I said before, the chance to actually get teams to come and base here, come and train here in the lead up to, uh, to 2023, all those opportunities are before us, and we'll be doing everything we can to attract teams to be here, uh, to put ourselves on that world stage because we know there's great economic benefit out of our in engaging sport and business and bringing that all together in the one place. Given Columbia here for a match, Sorry? given that Columbia missed out, why don't you try against Columbia here for a match? If you've got contacts, I'm happy to ring them. We would uh, be happy to talk to anyone and everyone. We would love to see uh, you know, the world's best players here on this stage. Again, we saw uh, when we had the Matildas here against Chile, the, the vibe and the excitement around Adelaide and South Australia was immense. And it's only going to build. If you have a look and see the response to what's happened today with the announcement, uh, you know, we're, we're three years away. This is going to get bigger and bigger, and there will be no stopping this juggernaut. In terms of dollar and cents, the dollars and cents, uh, what's the actual funding you guys are putting in here to upgrade? Yeah, uh, I don't have that uh, detail or the, the funding to upgrade here. Sorry. Um, what we have committed to as far as the bid process was $3 million and that was just to confirm that we would get this stadium up to the standard that it needed to be to be compliant for the World Cup. As I said a, a few moments ago, we'll look at other opportunities that are around and if we uh, you know, look to invest more, we want to make sure we're getting good bang for buck and we'll do all we can to have this stadium uh, in ship shop shape ship top shape I should say, I'll say it again. We'll do all we can to make sure that we have this stadium in tip top shape so that it's right to go for the World Cup and uh, the playing surface we know is outstanding but we'll make it as good as it can possibly be because people will love coming to Adelaide to be a part of the 2023 World Cup. Uh, Minister, you talked about basing teams here. Do you know what sort of capacity South Australia has for how many teams could potentially base themselves here? Yeah, that's a really great question and that's the great economic opportunity that we have here for South Australia and it's something we're really focused on when it comes to sport. You know, we love to see young people in Engaged and older people engaged in being active and being involved in sport, but there's an economic opportunity as well, and we need to have a look at that. So we'll be uh, speaking with as many countries as we can, looking for people that want to come and base here, where we can get some economic ties. That's all uh, a bonus that we can potentially ex extract from the, from this opportunity. So to clarify, you you you've bid for a, a group round and a round of 16. Okay, but neither of those are a certainty. So as far as the, uh, the, the, the process goes, and, and, and Natasha might, may want to speak more to this process, but uh, it was all put in through the bid process. Uh, there were group games in there as well, and potentially the round of 16 game. That's what we're gunning for. That's what was uh, part of our bid. We'll be pushing for as much as we can. If we can get more out of that, that would be fantastic. But this is a great opportunity. It's a, a big part of the process that we put forward. It will put Adelaide on the international stage, and uh, look, we look forward to embracing all the countries I think Sam, again, Sam, you can correct me here, but I think Sam was saying there are uh, more countries in uh, FIFA and more countries available to play in the World Cup than there are in the United Nations, am I correct yep, in that? Absolutely. Which is just fantastic. So again, the world's eyes are going to be on Australia, they're going to be on Adelaide. We welcome uh, all nations to come here, be a part of it, and uh, we'd love to see as many people here as possible.
I'm not sure again if this would be the best question for you to source perhaps somebody else, but um, in the bid presentation it did say that tr there will be travel groups, so Southern Australia, Eastern Australia and New Zealand, meaning that it's probably likely that Australia will be in that Eastern hub where some of the larger stadiums are in Australia. Um, so the first part of that would be we sort of conceded that we probably won't get a game with Australia in it here. And the second part of that question is are there any other nations that potentially the Adelaide football community would like to see come to South Australia? Can I say for the bulk of that question you're 100% right and I'm not the right person to answer that question but I will answer the tail end of it first and I think I've made this point but I'll make it again and that is look we welcome uh, all countries here to uh, to South Australia and there's the opportunity of course to play games here and we'll flesh our way through that as the draw rolls out but there's the opportunity also to get uh, teams and countries to come and base themselves here in the lead up uh, and then during the uh, the Women's World Cup as well so we'll look to make sure we can get the best bang for buck we can we know we've got great facilities here we know and let's have a look at South Australia at the moment when it comes to COVID. We know we're one of the safest places in the world. So I think countries will be very keen to be here in South Australia as they prepare for the Women's World Cup. And we'll open our doors to all of them and uh, hopefully take full advantage of that. But I might yeah. say... Did you do we have one more now, uh, oh, FFA okay. to respond yeah. to and not no, sorry, please. So just to outline that, I'm just told that those specificities are for the FFA to answer now and, and they'll be working through that as we go forward. Well, I'll ask him afterwards, it's not separate to this, so I'm pretty sure. You don't want to scarf on for that one? Place if you want, you want to do a place if you want. <laughs> I'll do that after for you. <laughs> Is there anyone else that you would like to speak to? Any of our young stars over here that must be just absolutely over the moon with the opportunities before them? I think it's going to be so exciting for these young players. Um, yeah, sure. I would really look forward to it. There you go. She's still smiling. She hasn't smiled since the moment. She hasn't got to the microphone. Can you tell us your second name too, please? Charlotte Grant. Grant. Is it Charlotte with an E on the end? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously pretty exciting news, but what was your reaction when you found out? Oh, I was over the moon. It was so exciting. Um, yeah, I woke up early like um, Jenna and uh, I couldn't believe it. It was like uh, it was like Christmas Eve the night before and best Christmas present ever in the morning, yeah. <laughs> How much of a boost do you think this could be for the W League, especially being part of the young Matilda set up here looking towards that as now that's your main goal? Yeah, for the W League, I think um, I think it'll be a great booster. Um, I think with like Jenna mentioned earlier, I think it will um, grow the game more, and that will the more girls we can get playing, the stronger the, the stronger the um, youth will get and push for spots in the W League. So um, I think yeah, it's going to be great for the game and other sports as well. And with the fears before it actually rolls around, you're probably a decent show of making a trial at least. For the yeah, I, I would really. That's my um, that's my goal. It's an aspiration of mine, and to the thought of playing on home soil is just a dream. Yeah, uh, um, dream.